All right, guys. Well, it has turned into a blissfully cool, rainy day after a hot, sweaty summer day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization where it is now a Sunday afternoon, a lovely Sunday evening here in the Finger Lakes of New York. That would be Sunday, June 26, 2022. So I have not brought you a Sunday sermon in a, in a while where we've shared some voices from the Doomosphere and uh Oh no, I can't remember the uh, alert listener who recommended this for my sermon this week. I vaguely reckon, remember doing a uh, either a Sunday sermon or at some point this fellow named Nick Money. Nick Money, I can't imagine that's his real name, but who knows. Uh, anyway, he is... Uh, his blog is called The Mycologist, so I guess he's a, a mushroom hunter or something. But anyway, he also has his Doomer blog, and uh, he wrote this 10 days ago on June 16th. Oh no, is my battery going to make it? I better just read the blog. Anyway, guys, uh, I'm going to come back with my own comments at the end. But I just want to uh, make the disclaimer before I get into this. Hopefully the battery's not going to run out. Just because I am reading something as a Sunday sermon does not mean I agree with every word of it. I agree with half of this and do not disagree with the other half. But I'll wait till the end because I don't think the battery's going to make it so I better dive right in so we're going to hear Nick Money on the blessing the blessing of extinction now he doesn't put the blessing of human extinction the blessing of extinction from 10 days ago oh no is this battery going to make it okay anyway off we go <clears throat> Take it away, Nick Money. Humans are on the fast track to extinction, and the mess that we have made will take most of the larger animals with us. In our unenvi unenviable position as witness of the collapse of the biosphere, grace can be sought in the certainty of the peaceful afterlife of the planet. The death of the last human will mean the end of human anguish. Picking gorillas as an example of the non-human casualties, the death of the last one, meaning the last gorilla, is also hopeful because after two centuries of gorilla hunting and trapping, there will be no more of these beautiful creatures to be shot. Pick any species of animal and its extinction will end the misery of its members. And this, of course, is what I will talk about at the end of this. When humans and other animals with brains are gone, Earth will orbit our star without fear and loathing for the first time in 500 million years. To explore this idea, we need to accept what is happen, happening, seek absolution from our sins in the inevitability of the apocalypse, and be assured that the nightmarish character of zoology is almost over. The nightmarish character of zoology. So let's start with acceptance. Okay. The first stage, acceptance. Since 1850, 
the human population has increased from 1 billion to 8 billion and the level of carbon dioxide in the air has risen by 50 percent. Carbon dioxide traps heat on Earth and more of it makes us warmer. We pour billions of tons of this gas into the atmosphere every year by burning hundreds of tons of oil, coal, and natural gas every second. What could possibly happen to change this picture? The pandemic shutdown reduced carbon dioxide emissions by a few percent, but they rebounded and are increasing in its wake. By 2100, the global average temperature will be four degrees Celsius higher than the end of the last century. This is the likeliest projection. Climate, op climate optimist will counter this scenario with examples of technological solutions. The effect of these remedies on extinction can be dismissed with a thought experiment. Imagine that we found a way to meet our energy needs without coal, oil, and gas. Once the burning stopped, the future would feel a little cooler, especially if methods for burying the existing carbon dioxide were perfected. But with the climate stabilized, the behavior that caused us to burn so much fuel would intensify, resulting in more humans, less forest and grasslands, and greater pollution of rivers and oceans. With or without climate change, our war with nature will proceed. Thank you. Uh, with or without climate change, our war, I would say, against nature will proceed. Decades ago, Gerald Durrell, he, uh, he was always my fav favorite writer when I was a kid. Decades ago, Gerald Durrell, the famous conservationist, recognized that, quote, the human race is in the position of a man sawing off the tree branch he is sitting on. Yes, 30 years after Durrell's death, the human population has increased by 2 billion people and the damage has intensified. The branch will snap now whether we keep sawing or not. The timeline for extinction is not known, so at least he's not one of these idiots uh, claiming that humans will be extinct by 2026. That's good to know. The timeline for extinctions is not known, but sooner or later, the disappearing mammals will be joined by the other groups of animals. Almost everything will be leaving the metaphorical arc, creeping down the gangplank into oblivion. Millions of other species, seen and unseen, including plants, seaweeds, and fungi, will be leaving too. The tiniest of organisms will inherit the planet, but great gulps of the microbial world will also disappear in the depths of this planetary holocaust. So now let's look at absolution. Look in the mirror and you will see a member of a species of African ape that has devastated the biosphere. You personally and me, of course, uh, you and I personally have caused a great deal of damage and are responsible for the suffering of many intelligent and sensitive creatures. Adults 
have left a trail of wreckage in their lives and children will participate in decades of future brutality toward nature. So I guess he thinks humans will be around for decades. Vegetarians are not responsible for the suffering of farm animals, but they are culpable for the molestation of wildlife through the great net of international commerce. Throughout history, we have helped ourselves to huge helpings of hubris about the brilliance of humans and have avoided the truth of our nature, namely that Homo sapiens is a uniquely destructive animal that has been active in the business of extinction since it dispersed from Africa 100,000 years ago. In addition to killing animals for food or to make space for more of us, which is uh, the way we have actually killed the most wild animals, is to make space for more humans. We have bred and imprisoned animals for entertainment and for medical experimentation. To obviate our unpleasantness, we have decided that other species lack the capacity for terror. In this century, all but the cruelest of philosophers have moved on from the Cartesian fantasy that the absence of conversation implies the absence of emotion, but we cling to the fantasy of the heightened sensitivity of humans. While a chicken lacks a great repertoire of expressions of grief, it feels panic and experiences pain to the full extent of its avian brain and we heighten the horror by keeping birds in factory farms in conditions of exquisite unpleasantness. There is no excuse for the way that we ruin the lives of animals on farms and in labs, but we are pardoned from killing them in nature and destroying the biosphere. We are guiltless because animals are powered by the transfer of energy from one organism to another. The nightmare of zoology began when this fundamental rule of life was coupled with the evolution of brains and the necessity of suffering. This happened long before we arrived. Sentient life, sentient life is designed for suffering because the avoidance of it is what keeps an animal alive for long enough to propel its genes into the future. When brains evolved, avoidance, meaning avoidance of suffering, became conscious, and with consciousness came fear. Our absolution for ruining the planet comes from the same evolutionary source. We need to eat, and we seek to reproduce well, some of us do. And by being good at both things, we have extracted too much energy from the planet. Nature was designed this way. Now, we will end up with assurance. Assurance. Animal sensitivity is the foundation <clears throat> of the great tragedy of the biosphere, the overarching sadness of Earth, which will end when the species with brains are gone. <clears throat> Human extinction 
will mean no more animals in laboratories to dread the sound of the opening door and the sight of the approaching white coat. And over a long span, injuries, illnesses, and starvation in nature will disappear species by species as the planet gets hotter. This is not much to go on, but the end of suffering is the best news about the end times. Happiness will end also, of course, but contentment is fleeting and an animal or a human that is never born will not miss the moments of satisfaction and joy. What do you think, Sanjo? Humans have always caused the suffering of other animals. We have destroyed most of the pristine ecosystems and the rapid change in climate is our fault too. Most of these actions were hard baked into human nature. The apocalypse was inevitable because the cost of being human has always been extracted from the rest of nature. What do we do with this clarity of vision? I suggest that part of the answer lies in recognizing the, the fact that these are the last decades of pain as terminal illness encourages many people to embrace the relief that they know will come with their departure so we may feel some grace in these end times. The way we spend our lives in the absence of hope for the future of humanity is a matter for the individual. The best that any of us can do until the sky falls is to be kinder to each other and humane towards the rest of nature as it suffers with us on this watery globe. The sooner the biosphere collapses, the sooner the brainy animals will be liberated from suffering. When we are gone, the biosphere is likely to repopulate with new species with brains, and the suffering will resume in millions of years, but at least things will be quiet for a while and nothing will be horrified by existence as Earth spins on her soft axle. Okay, uh, anyway, guys, uh, I, I don't even know where to begin uh, hitting the uh, bullshit button on, on Nick Money. Now, now uh, w what I like uh, about this article, is, 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 is this essay, is that I, I love it when, you know, the same uh, essay or article or whatever uh, ha has an even mix of no shit Sherlock and bullshit detected uh, in it. So, for the things that I agree with is uh, everything he said about humans uh, and our effect uh, on our fellow earthlings is dead on target. Amen brother Nick Money for uh, uh, understanding uh, that humans, that, that we are, we, we're, we're evil incarnate is what we are. Uh, we are the, the, a, a grand failed experiment. Uh, I, I could go on and on. It is time 
for us to go. We have wreaked enough havoc on this planet, okay? It is time for us to go quietly into that good night the sooner we go, and it is not going to be soon enough, sure as hell isn't going to be in the next four years or ten years, the sooner we go, the uh, better chance that uh, uh, whatever fellow earthlings we have not already obliterated off the face of the planet will have to, you know, to get back to the business of, uh, of, of of getting their lives back together. But, but all of this other crap, this is a cop-out. This is a chicken shit cop-out. This is the most human-centric, this guy. Uh, he's absolute, uh, he is one of the guiltiest uh, narcissistic, uh, human primacy, uh, the guy is totally full of himself. I need to uh, just about let the F word slip. This dude, there's this other guy I remember interviewing, this guy Gary somebody. I, I came this close to slamming the phone down. Who is that idiot uh, talking this crap? Who, who, it, 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 since when is it human's business to decide uh, about the suffering of, of other species? Okay, cut the crap. It's none of your damn business, Nick Money, to, to be talking all of this. What did, uh, I can't remember who the fellow who sent this to me. I'm sorry, brother. He said, this sounds a bit elitist to me. This is beyond elitist. All right, it's insulting. It's insulting to my intelligence. Uh, it, 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 it is the biggest cop-out uh, trying to uh, absolve, talk about absolution, uh, this clueless moron trying to absolve his guilt, uh, acting like uh, that when humans kill the last gorilla, it's going to be a good thing. Maybe when the gorillas kill the last human, it's going to be a good thing. Now, uh, I, I, I will say uh, about the, the, the suffering that uh, we, we can take full responsibility for is the suffering that, that humans have caused other sentient beings. Okay, somehow the other sentient beings figured out how to deal with their suffering before we came, came along. But uh, just getting rid of the suffering that humans calls them will, will be a it will be a cause for joyous celebration for every other earthling what's what's it called ethylism is that thing is that the word ethylism I, I, I think this absolutely absurd human centric uh, bullshit philosophy uh, that that extinction uh, of any other uh, species on this planet other than humans uh, is a good thing. There is no blessing in extinction. The, the, the very title of this, unadulterated horseshit, there is one extinction that will be a blessing both for humans, he, he's right about that, he, he, you can't argue, uh, someone who is never born, uh, well, well he, he, you, you know, I, I mean, I've mentioned that, uh, you can use that one, I mean, someone who is never born uh, will never know suffering. Uh, but to extend that from humans to other animals, uh, it, it, it's not our own suffering 
uh, well, that is going to die when humans die, but it is the suffering that we cause to all of our fellow earthlings that's going to die with us. And that is the blessing. It is the blessing of human extinction. If he wanted to put, uh, if he wanted to title his essay correctly and title it The Blessing of Human Extinction, uh, I, I would cheer him on. Now he seems to be in favor of human, I'm a little unclear, he seems to be in favor of human extinction. So to that degree, amen, Brother Nick Money. But to sit here with your pompous, elitist ass uh, trying to tell me uh, that uh, the last gorilla uh, being shot by some clueless moron, uh, the last gorilla, the last chimpanzee, the last elephant, the last lion, the last tiger, uh, there, there, there's no blessing about it. It is, uh, it, it, it's the single biggest crime in the history of this planet. And uh, this little pansy is not willing to own up to it. Uh, you know, I'm not falling for it, dude. Not for not for one damn minute. Uh, a, 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 am I swallowing this ethelism crap that you and that other Gary from Amenda Ham or whoever that jackass talking out his ass? You, you know. Anyway, but you know, for the part uh, pointing out the obvious and. Uh, it will be a celebration uh, by our fellow earthlings to kiss goodbye to their tormentors. And with that, I need to wrap up today's Sunday sermon because I need to decide do I want a venison burger, a turkey burger, or pork egg rolls for dinner. I'm getting hungry. Uh, I think we're going to go with the bush meat. I want to thank uh, Sandy Shellis from Environmental Coffee House for uh, for the uh, delicious venison burgers. And me and the little dog are going to go uh, turn on our gas grill and uh, get a big bloody gob of, uh, of venison. Man, my mouth is watering. Get out there and enjoy your bloody blob of your own fellow earthling of choice before you go extinct. Bye, guys. All right, little dog, are you ready for some venison burger? All right. We got our fracked gas. We got our Dynaglow grill. All right. We got a nice bloody, bloody gob of dead fellow earthling. Mm. Thank you, Sandy. Man, look at this gorgeous evening shaping up. Bye, guys.